So Cisco IP phone, it's a 7940, a Raspberry Pi, it's a Model 3, and you will also need to connect this to your network. Well, depending on what you have, I don't have a power over Ethernet enabled switch, therefore I bought three of these uh, PoE injectors. Um, three of them, I think uh, it was about £12 for the, th for the set of three. These are the 48 volt, 500 milliamp LAN cable goes to your network. Uh, PoE goes into the leftmost Ethernet port on the back of the phone. Now this is probably, depending on, again, you may have these already, I don't. 7940 um, will not work out of the box with a standard Cat5 cable because the power over Ethernet, the um, the two, sorry, the four uh, wires in the Cat5 cable or Cat6 cable that aren't used for T100 networks um, need to be reversed. So this won't work out of the box. This is what your standard um, passive PoE cable looks like, and that is your standard Cat5 cable. So on a Cat5, on a Cat5, uh, 4, 5, and 7, and 8, are basically not used for data. Data is one, two, and three and six. On so on a seventy nine forty five, for example, or a bunch of other Cisco more up to date Cisco phones, they'll work out of the box. But in order to have a seventy nine forty power up via a standard Cat five cable, you're going to need to switch seven and eight for four and five. So basically, blue becomes brown and brown becomes blue. Now. There are adapters you can get if you look for uh, reversed passive PoE adapters. I wasn't able to source them in the UK. They seem to be mainly American based. Uh, I believe they are used on the, I can't remember the name of the access points over there. Is it Equinity, Ubiquity, Ubiquity. So I think they use in the Ubiquity um, access points. But basically we're gonna reverse it. So what I wanna do, let me see if I can do this live. This is a cable, as you probably many of them, the top is knackered. So what I want to try and do is remove the crimp, take off this broken one and replace it. So again, it's probably worthwhile actually investing in a crimping tool and a bunch and a bunch of these. Again, you probably have some around, so let me just get mine. There we go. When I made one of these before, I just cut the cable off. But I think what I could probably do here is actually just remove the crimp and then just re just move the wires. So if I just do that, I'll let, I don't care about this, I'm going to break this off. So I don't know how this is going to work. These are well and truly stuck on, aren't we? Okay, I'm not going to mess about with that. Goodbye. But we'll use that as a guide because that's how much cable we want to kind of put in the top. I'm going to get this. Take it off to there. Let's just get this right. So there's the orange, white, orange. Green, white, sorry, green, white, white, brown, then brown, then green, then blue, then blue, white. What's best to do is just hold them in something with some tweezers or something so you can check you've got it in the right position. Come fairly close, get that tight. Tweezers are rubbish. Useful just to have a little bit of something strong to keep them together so I use Gorilla Tape that will just just keeps them where they need to be for now to try and get a sense of where it needs to be so the crimp's going to be there with that it's going to go to about there so we'll cut it off a couple of millimeters above the cutters in this start off a little bit higher 
Just do that again and try and get them into as straight a line as possible. It's a bit knacky, but break a few cables and you'll be fine. It's a bit better this way around. There we go. Let's now take get rid of the Gorilla Tape. Let's hope I can just slide that off. Okay, I'm just going to cut these down now. I think they're not quite the right length. Okay. To the back, orange in. You can just see them slide through all the way to the top. They are in. See the wires right up to the top. So I think that is good. Give that a crimp. It fits into there. Genius. There we go. Epic. Right, so. Yeah, Grimping 101. Watch some videos before I do anything. That looks good. Orange on the left, orange on the left. Blue is now on the right. So when we just do a quick. Let's do a quick check. Where's the multimeter? Don't need this. Just try this. Yeah, new one's fine. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Tricky to get to. So four should now be seven. There it is. Five should now be eight. There we go. Brilliant. So we have successfully converted a broken Cat5 cable into a power over Ethernet cable. So we'll be using that shortly. So this is going to be installing PABX on a Raspberry Pi and configuring a Cisco 7940 phone. First thing to do, well if you just if you do a search for Raspberry Pi PABX, what actually pops up first? Okay, so there is there is various ways of doing this. I'm going to be using um, I'm going to be using Asterix. This is open source software. Asterisk, ask, oh, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Easy to say. Oh, Automa. And then this is this is going to be installing the RAS PBX image for the Raspberry Pi which is basically um, Raspbian plus all the relevant software but this this puts a, a free PBX uh, is basically the software we're installing which includes Asterix so this is the, the GUI that makes everything a bit easier so uh, either Google Ras PBX uh, you'll find it Asterix for Raspberry Pi hit download grab the latest image torrent HTTP grab that and then burn it to your SD card. I think minimum four gigs is probably okay. So either Rufus or uh, Belinda Etcher seem to be the, the, the most commonly used burning software. So burn that and then boot at the Raspberry Pi. You don't need to actually have the, the, the display on at all. So Raspberry Pi, we're just gonna take the image in the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi image, plug in a network cable, and turn on the Raspberry Pi. So this is going to just boot up behind the scenes. And what we're going to do, because out of the box, SSH is already enabled, we're going to just secure a shell into, into the box. What else to say about this? Uh, I'm not going to be doing the Raspberry uh, Pi upgrade 
just to save time but you should when you first SSH in you should in fact, let's just go through the steps I'm just going to be using PowerShell cool so this is um, this is directory I've set up with all the relevant files that we're going to need for today in fact we'll set up two we'll have um, two PowerShell instances running actually no we'll use putty for the other one why not we'll just putty into the box so it should have should have, it might have loaded by now my router I have assigned a static IP address for the Raspberry Pi because the, the MAC address is always going to give a 1.25 now the, one of the reasons why you might want to have the heads up, you know, have the actual display just so you can log into the box. Um, root is the ID and Raspberry is the password, just to run an if config. But we'll we'll do that in a second. So let's run into the box. So we're going to log in as root Raspberry. Here we go. We'll load it up. So when you either well. Turn the box on, if config, and then scroll up, you'll see the IP address that you've got. So in case you haven't got DHCP, you haven't um, statically set an IP address, you can use that. So let's power up the Cisco phone. Okay, turn it on, keep your finger on hash, wait for the boot up. Reset sequence, there we go, we're gonna be quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, star zero hash. Save config no, so we're gonna reset this phone. Factory reset. Which is just gonna wipe the configuration file I've already got set up on this. And just wanna show what's gonna happen what status messages you should be checking for to see what steps you still need to perform. So we're going to configure the LAN, VLAN. It's going to get an IP address because it's on the network. But it's going to have phone, what is it, unprovisioned? Phone unprovisioned, yeah. Basically, it's, it's trying to connect to a server to find the configuration file, but there is no server set up. As we can see, if we go into status, status messages, we can see, so the top two, we'd have to worry about the unprovisioned proxy backup or emergency, that's not relevant. There's no valid line names given. There is no TFTP server available. So what we can do now in fact, we'll do this. We'll do this first because what we need to do, we're going to set up a TFTP server on the Raspberry Pi. And for that, please come back for part two. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.